Happy birthday, my son. If only I could have helped you. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 darkest Avatar and Korra moments ever. Now, 10,000 years of darkness begins. I know what you really think of me. You think I'm a monster. That's one of the saddest stories I've ever heard. For this list, we're going over the darkest and most mature moments from Avatar The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra. Since we will be talking about important plot points, a spoiler alert is now in effect. What do you think was the darkest point in the franchise? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Aang is struck by lightning. We've got to find Sokka and Toph! The grand finale of Book 2 of Avatar sees Aang and Katara fighting against Azula and Zuko underneath the city of Ba Sing Se. When the Dai Li army arrives to back the Fire Nation royals, Aang enters the Avatar state to give himself an advantage in battle. But before he can make any moves, Azula strikes him with her lightning. It's later implied that this bolt doesn't merely injure him, it briefly ends his life. Thankfully, Katara is there to heal him. When the underage protagonist nearly meeting his end barely makes our list, you know things are about to get dark. I didn't just get hurt, did I? It was worse than that. I was gone. But you brought me back. Number 19. Ming Hua's Shocking Demise When I get out of here, none of you will survive! You won't get out. After Avatar Korra is captured by a villainous group called the Red Lotus, a group of her strongest allies comes to rescue her. While she takes on the formidable Zaheer, her friends Mako and Bolin take on two vicious opponents. Mako fights Ming Hua, a waterbender who creates prosthetic liquid arms for herself. But her unique bending style is ultimately her undoing. Now it's over! Mako takes advantage that her arms can conduct electricity by firing a bolt of lightning at her. Ming Hua can't avoid or survive the attack. Although Korra is aimed at a teen audience, it was still willing to show a villain being taken out in a grisly way. No! No! You don't understand! Number 18, Azula's Breakdown. I thought we were going to do this together. My decision is final. You... you can't treat me like this! While she may be a militant villainess, Azula is still human. Towards the end of the series, her best friends turn against her. Azula's father also gives her a huge amount of responsibility by naming her the Fire Lord. In the wake of these events, Azula begins to lose her grip on sanity and becomes increasingly paranoid. She even hallucinates visions of her mother. I didn't want to miss my own daughter's coronation. Don't pretend to act proud. I know what you really think of me. You think I'm a monster. As satisfying as it is to see Azula's perfect facade crumble, we can't help but pity her. Although the former princess did some monstrous things, no one wants to celebrate her struggles with mental illness. <laughs> Number 17, Please Fate. So, do we have a deal? Yes, you release the airbenders, and then I'll turn myself over. The Red Lotus asks Korra to surrender to them to save the lives of a group of kidnapped airbenders. During the exchange, a fight ensues. Although Lin and Suyin Beifong try to rescue Korra, they're held off by Pali, a combustion bender who can fire explosions through the eye on her forehead. Her explosive attacks initially give the metal bending sisters a lot of trouble, but they finally take advantage of a grim opening. I'm gonna draw her fire. You take her out. Just as Pali is about to fire a blast, Suyin encases the villain's head in metal. This explosion backfires and instantly ends the villain's life. While the metal prevents us from seeing anything, the unseen implications of this scene are positively brutal. Where's Pali? She sacrificed her life for our cause. Now let's make sure it wasn't in vain. Number 16, brainwashing at Lake Laogai. We need to talk to the king about the war. It's important. You're in Ba Sing Se now. Everyone is safe. In season two of Avatar, Aang and company go to Ba Sing Se, a walled city that has mostly stayed out of the war. The gang discovers one major reason citizens have stayed out of the conflict. Anyone who speaks publicly about the war or causes too much trouble is brainwashed. The process is carried out by the Dai Li, Ba Sing Se's secret police force. These agents bring their victims to Lake Laogai. There, the Dai Li hypnotize the captives until they behave exactly as the agents want them to. There's no war in Ba Sing Se. 
What are you talking about? Where do you think all the refugees come from? You can't hide it. Did Avatar depict a totalitarian government that silences dissent through reconditioning the populace and spreading disinformation to retain power? Yep. This show sure likes to hit kids with some heavy stuff. You have made yourselves enemies of the state. Take them into custody. Number 15. The Avatar cycle is broken. Bravo. Nothing could stop this moment. During Korra's second season, the Avatar faces off against her evil uncle Unalak. He allies himself with the dark spirit Vatu. Meanwhile, Korra sides with Rava, the light spirit that lives inside her body and makes the existence of the Avatar possible. Although the good guys try their best, Vatu and Unalak eventually tear the light spirit out of Korra's body. Rava is then destroyed piece by piece. Korra! He's got the light spirit! The spirit's destruction also severs Korra's connection to all the past avatars, including Aang. Rava's absence also meant that the avatar cycle couldn't continue after Korra's life ended. Although the light spirit returns later on, seeing her destruction was quite traumatic for Korra and the audience. Now, 10,000 years of darkness begins. Number 14. Ko the Face Stealer appears. You speak with him, you must be very careful to show no emotion at all, not the slightest expression, or he will steal your face. The spirit world of the Avatar franchise can be pretty dang scary. Although Tenzin, Korra, and Bumi's trip through the fog of lost souls was terrifying, a spirit introduced in Avatar is far spookier. Ko, the face stealer, is a being who has the body of a large centipede and a constantly changing face. In the season one finale, Aang needs to find the spirit to gain vital information. You've come to me with a new face. But he's informed that Ko will take the face of anyone who shows the tiniest hint of emotion. This leads to a tense scene where Aang struggles to remain expressionless. Ko's creepy body, shape-shifting faces, and unsettling voice add up to a spirit that is straight-up nightmare fuel. I must be going now. We'll meet again. Number 13, Little Soldier Boy. No, it's not a romantic picnic, but it is a special occasion. Oh boy, get ready to weep. Iroh spends a day journeying through Ba Sing Se collecting items, while helping everyone from a child to a mugger along the way. Eventually, the purpose of his excursion is revealed. He wanted to build a small memorial to honor his late son Lu Ten's birthday. Lu Ten lost his life during Iroh's 600-day siege of Ba Sing Se. The idea that he's mourning in the same city where Lu Ten lost his life is sad, but our tears really flow when Iroh sings a heartbreaking song. Leaves from the vine Falling so slow Like fragile tiny shells Drifting in the fog. Plenty of children's programming features missing parents or guardians who have passed away, but few deal with a parent losing their child in such a mature and heartbreaking manner. My beloved Lieutenant, I will see you again. Number 12. Katara almost commits a devastating crime. I know who killed your mother. I'm going to help you find him. Katara enlists Zuko's help to find the Fire Nation man that took her mother's life. During the pair's revenge quest, the normally kind waterbender is unexpectedly ruthless. Eventually, Katara finally catches up to her target, a man named Yan Ra. She was protecting the last waterbender. What? Who? Me! Consumed with fury, she forms a ton of icicle spears by waterbending the rain around her and unleashes them all at once. However, Katara stops them from hitting yon just before they caused irreparable damage. Although she didn't commit a crime she couldn't take back, she came extremely close. Katara's shocking journey with Zuko brought her to the edge of a very dark place. I don't know if it's because I'm too weak to do it or if it's because I'm strong enough not to. Number 11. Sozin abandons Roku. You were friends with Fire Lord Sozin? Back then, he was just Prince Sozin and he was my best friend. Before the Fire Lord Sozin and Avatar Roku were enemies, the two of them were close friends. They drifted apart after the royal expressed his desires to expand the Fire Nation past its existing borders. Since Sozin's goals conflicted with Roku's duties to maintain balance between the nations, the two had a major falling out. But I warn you, even a single step out of line will result in your permanent end. 
The two reunited after a long time apart when the volcano on Roku's island erupted. Sozin helps his old friend contain the destruction at first, but when poisonous gases weakened Roku so much he could barely move, the Fire Lord leaves his former friend to perish on the volcano. Without you, all my plans are suddenly possible. Sozin completes his betrayal by starting a long and devastating war against the other nations. Number 10. Azulon orders Ozai to obliterate Zuko. If Uncle doesn't make it back from war, then Dad would be next in line to be Fire Lord, wouldn't he? Iroh was once the heir to the Fire Nation throne, but things changed after he lost his son. While Iroh mourned, his brother Ozai asked Fire Lord Azulon if he could become next in line. The Fire Nation ruler is understandably furious at his son's callousness, but Azulon's response to this ridiculous request was much worse. He orders Ozai to take Zuko's life so the prince can understand what losing a child is like. In true family tradition, Ozai decides to do something much worse. Instead of going through with the order, he has his wife Ursa take Azulon out with poison. Ozai could have just stood up to his old man, but instead, he used his loved ones as pawns just to seize power. As was your dying wish, you are now succeeded by your second son. Number 9. Jet's Last Stand Jet is a fairly dark character in general. The young freedom fighter is willing to take innocent lives just to get revenge on the Fire Nation. I heard your plan to destroy the Earth Kingdom town. Our plan is to rid the valley of the Fire Nation. There are people living there, Jet, mothers and fathers and children. But the darkest part of his story is how it ends. After being brainwashed by the Dai Li, Jet leads Aang and company right into the stone hands of the secret police force. Aang helps the freedom fighter break free from his mind control, but after Jet attempts to lash out at the Dai Li leader, he receives a fatal blow. Although he claims he'll be alright, Toph can tell he's lying. We never see Jet again. Despite happening off screen, his demise is clearly one of the show's bleakest moments. I'm sorry, Aang. Don't be. Number 8. Appa's Cruel Circus Visit. I'm sorry, Appa. One of the hardest episodes to rewatch is the one focused on Aang's flying bison Appa. After being stolen from the gang by sandbenders, Appa has to endure a series of awful events by himself. One of the most disturbing parts of his story occurs after he's imprisoned in a Fire Nation circus. But don't worry, you won't anymore. Because I am going to break you. The ringmaster refuses to feed Appa and threatens him with fire until the animal obeys the performer's commands. Children's programming doesn't always devote time to tackling how cruel humans can be towards animals. Almost a decade after this episode premiered, the issues this story raised are unfortunately still relevant. You've been through so much recently. Hurt and betrayed. So twisted up inside. Number 7. Zuko Shouts at the Storm Why can't I do it? Instead of lightning, it keeps exploding in my face! Like everything always does! Zuko is an angry young man. We all know this. Despite that fact, his uncle Iroh is always trying to help the prince improve and find balance in himself. Iroh even opts to show him how to redirect lightning, but he refuses to let his nephew try out the technique for real. I thought that was the point, you teaching me how to protect myself from it. Yeah, but I'm not going to shoot lightning at you. Desperate to prove himself, Zuko decides to seek lightning elsewhere. He climbs to a mountaintop and rails at a storm to strike him. You've always thrown everything you could at me. Well, I can take it, and now I can give it back! Thankfully, he is never hit by any lightning. Although the storm held back, the show didn't pull any punches. The teenage Zuko was so damaged that he openly welcomed the potentially painful and fatal consequences of being struck by lightning. Number 6. Korra Suffers PTSD After Being Poisoned And though you will never again be reborn, your name will echo throughout history. Korra, the last Avatar. We've already touched on Korra being kidnapped by the Red Lotus, but their ultimate goal was significantly more messed up. They wanted to poison Korra to trigger her Avatar state. If her life was taken away while she was in this powerful form, the Avatar cycle would end. Watching her get poisoned is incredibly gruesome, but the aftermath is equally grim. <laughs> what are you laughing about? You're too late! The poison's been in her system too long! Korra has trouble walking after the ordeal and suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder. Even after she makes a big physical recovery, she's plagued by nightmares and hallucinations. Korra's PTSD lasts past the episode she's poisoned and well into the next season. The show handles this subject well by depicting the mature struggle in a realistic way. There is no shame in taking the time you need to make a full recovery. Number 
five, Noah Talk's future goes up in smoke. It's over, brother. I'm sorry for what I had to do to you. Messed up families are par for the course in the Avatar franchise. Korra's first season features one of the worst examples of both series. While the villainous Noah Talk, aka Amon, terrorizes Republic City, his brother, Councilman Tarlock, tries to protect it in his own twisted way. After both of them become wanted men, they escape the city on a boat. Noah Talk is optimistic that the two can start a new chapter in their lives. Although Tarlock plays along at first, he eventually decides to bring their stories to an end. The former councilman uses one of Noah Talk's weapons to blow up the boat. It will be just like the good old days. It's safe to say that no one saw the two brothers going out in such a sudden and grim way. That's one of the saddest stories I've ever heard. Number four, bloodbending battle. Hello, children. <laughs> Sorry to frighten you. You'd be forgiven for mistaking the Puppet Master episode for a horror film. The darkest part of this grim story occurs when Hama and Katara confront each other. Controlling the water in another body. Enforcing your own will over theirs. Hama is a bloodbender, a waterbender who's able to control the blood inside the bodies of living things, effectively turning them into puppets. After using this technique on Katara, she uses it on Aang and Sokka. <laughs> this is my brain has a mind of its own! Hama controls their movements and nearly makes them wound each other. Katara uses bloodbending to put an end to the Dark Tale. The fact that Katara had to become what she fought against is disturbing. Congratulations, Katara. You're a bloodbender. Although she never wanted to learn this twisted technique, she later bloodbends a man when she's blinded by rage and her own darkness. Number three, Zaheer ends the Earth Queen. So, where are my airbenders? I'd be happy to tell you once you hand the avatar over to me. Airbending was generally seen as the most gentle of the bending disciplines, until the brutal Zaheer became an airbender. As part of his plan to capture the avatar, Zaheer makes a deal with the Earth Queen, but she turns on him and orders her loyalists to attack him. When Zaheer and his allies win the battle, he decides to get rid of the Earth Queen. Maybe I forgot to mention something to you. I don't believe in queens. He uses a horrifying airbending technique on the queen that swiftly leads to her demise. The disturbing scene leaves us breathless every time we watch it. Zaheer's brutal bending is far and away one of the most wicked acts in the entire franchise. He's the man who just took down the Earth Queen. You want to be next? Number two, Ozai scars Zuko. Try to understand. My nephew is a complicated young man. He has been through much. Zuko goes through some dark times throughout the story of Avatar, but one of his lowest points happened before the show began. During a storm, Iroh recounts how Zuko got his infamous scar. After speaking out of turn during a war meeting, Zuko was forced to duel his father, but he refuses to fight. Ozai punishes Zuko's refusal by using firebending to give his son a painful scar. You will learn respect and suffering will be your teacher. The Fire Lord's actions would even be disturbing in a show aimed at adults. Seeing how despicable Ozai was to his own son took the story to a very dark place. But what could be darker than a parent giving their child a scar? Well, if you like this video, check out our series, How Geek Culture Became Pop Culture. <laughs>
We're still stunned Avatar could convey the magnitude of such a heinous act so simply and so effectively. But you were right. And if firebenders found this temple, that means they found the other ones too. I really am the last airbender. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.